This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Bradley Jacobs. Uh, this talk is about enforcing coding standards across teams. Um, my Twitter handle is in the top left hand corner of all of the slides. The link to the slides is at the top right hand corner um, of all the slides. Uh, so if you need that at all, it will be there for the whole presentation. So some of the things we're going to talk about today are what are coding standards, why do we need them, uh, and some methods to enforce them. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at PHP code sniffer. And that's, we're going to look at it in three parts. Uh, it is a command line tool, so we'll take a look at how to run it as a command line. Uh, we'll take a look at how to integrate it in, the, in your IDE. Um, and we'll also take a look at it uh, integrating it with version control. If you use subversion or git, uh, there are options there for you. So what we won't cover today uh, is installation, configuration, and generally how PHP code sniffer works under the hood. I don't really want to get up in the nitty gritty of uh, the technical underpinnings of PHP code sniffer. Uh, that's not the point of this talk. This is really a talk to get you familiar with coding standards and more generally how to enforce them. So tomorrow, if you're still curious, during lunch, you can Google it um, and research deeper. So let's talk about me. Um, I'm a big Transformers fan. I also read a lot of Marvel comics. And I'm a web developer. I code mostly in PHP and JavaScript. And a lot of my experience revolves around WordPress. I've actually been working with WordPress for about uh, eight or nine years now. And for the past few years, I've worked for uh, a few different agencies that have specialized in WordPress. And while I haven't done a lot of imp new implementations, I've done a lot of maintenance and uh, enhancements and generally just reading a lot of other people's code. Um, in addition to that, one of the agencies I worked for was a WordPress.com VIP partner. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, it is WordPress.com's enterprise level offering. And the key takeaway with that is that with every code commit you make to uh, VIP, it's reviewed uh, by a member of the VIP team. And it's checked for a multitude of things, <clears throat> including uh, making sure it won't break the VIP multi-site. Uh, it's checked for performance. It's checked against the VIP coding standards, which um, has some very specific rules to them. So between, you know, and in that environment, you can't just commit, test, commit, test. You really need to have tested your code well locally and in maybe a staging environment uh, very thoroughly before you ever commit your code. Um, because if you don't, it's going to get rejected. And it's going to be thrown back, and you're going to be given reasons why uh, it was rejected. But between looking at so many other people's code and being held to such a strict standard, you can start to understand how I've uh, come to appreciate good coding standards. So the next question is, what are coding standards? Right? Well, coding standards are um, basically a coding style mutually agreed upon by a team or a community. Um, in our case, we're hopefully all using WordPress, and WordPress has its own uh, coding standards. 
I've actually linked to it in the slides. Um, and more generally, a uh, <coughs> excuse me, a coding standard covers a multitude of things that seem very innocuous and simple, like you know, file organization, indentation, white space, the ever popular tabs versus spaces debate. Um, you know, very common things that you kind of take for granted on a daily basis. So if we were to look at a simple piece of code that I clearly did not update since the last time I gave this talk, um, what sorts of things might be covered by coding standard? Um, very simply, according to my amazing Photoshop skills, some of these things, this isn't everything, but you know, spacing in general, uh, we probably want a space after our control statement, the if. We might want some padding within our parentheses. And we probably want a space on either side of our operator, the equals. Um, and on the next line, we also may want to you know, make sure we're escaping any output we echo out. Uh, these are, you know, these spaces are fairly innocuous. Escaping output is a, a very important uh, thing that WordPress uh, wants you to do um, for security, among other things. So those are some very simple things that a coding standard might cover. In other words, Here is a piece of code um, that isn't strictly following the coding standard. It's fairly neat, but it could do better. While this is the same piece of code that does follow the coding standards. Um, at initial glance, it's significantly easier to read all the assignments in the array are aligned, they're well commented, there's padding between, uh, uh, there's padding within all of our parentheses. It's generally just a little bit easier to read at a glance. And as a person that looks at a lot of other people's code, I'd much rather be looking at this code than I would this code. So why do we need coding standards? Right? Well, we just saw from that example, it improves readability, um, which also helps with maintainability. If we can read the code easier um, at a glance, then chances are we're going to be able to catch something that's not quite right. Maybe uh, a syntax error, maybe just a, a bug in general. Um, so those are two of the main benefits. And oftentimes is the case, at least in my work experience, is that uh, a developer, we'll call them developer one, uh, will get assigned a project. Um, maybe it's a big feature, not really important. The, the developer uh, analyzes the problem, goes about the problem in a very specific way, and creates a solution for it. Now, down the road, a bug might be found, or maybe an enhancement is requested by a client, and a ticket is created. A new developer, developer two, will get that ticket. And he'll look at the code, he'll try and figure out what developer one was thinking, but in my experience, more often than not, developer two kicks the ticket back to developer one. And that developer one ends up owning that for the lifetime of his employment. And that's not something we want, right? Um, we want anyone to be able to go in and edit any code. We, we, and coding standards give us that's, that consistency between code. We want to anonymize code so you can't tell 
who wrote it, right? We will be, and when we get that anonymity in our code, we start to feel a collective ownership because it's, um, again, more consistent and uh, more readable. So we also feel that we could change this code to fix the issue. And peer review, as a result, also um, improves because, again, it's more readable. And you can find these things like uh, bugs, or maybe you can ask these questions uh, if it's performant, you know, if it doesn't quite look right, um, and if it truly uh, fixes the problem it's trying to solve. Um, so these are the benefits of coding standards. So coding standards are nice, but um, you need some way to enforce them. It's one thing to have a set of rules and, you know, and ask everyone to read the rules. It's another to actually enforce them and make sure everyone's actually following them. Right? So <clears throat> sometimes these tools to enforce coding standards are called static analysis tools. And they exist for lots of different languages. As you can see, um, we are going to focus on PHP Code Sniffer uh, because we work in WordPress and the majority of the code base is written in PHP. Though I know that's changing and heading towards JavaScript, we're not quite there yet. Um, so that'll be a talk for another day. But today we're going to focus on PHP Code Sniffer. And um, I've linked to some documentation here that's on the pair site. Um, I would not recommend uh, installing Code Sniffer with pair. Uh, I would actually recommend going to the WordPress coding standards repo on GitHub, which I've linked to right here. Um, and I would suggest following their instructions to install both Code Sniffer and the WordPress coding standards themselves, uh, because it doesn't require pair, and the way it organizes the directories uh, makes a little bit more sense and is a little bit more intuitive. Uh, you, you don't have to dig through pair directories to try and find where the coding standards are installed, so on and so forth. <clears throat> So the first thing you need to do is pick a standard, right? And the great thing, uh, Grace Hopper, among many other people, uh, has said the wonderful thing about standards is that there are so many of them to choose from. Um, there's no need to create a new standard. Uh, and I would actually really, really recommend you don't do that. Um, for the obligatory XKCD comic uh, pretty much nails that scenario. Uh, and we work in WordPress, so there's already a, a coding standard. Uh, it lives on GitHub. It's active. It's an active doc, uh, an active repo. There are core committers that maintain it, um, and. They are working on it regularly. I follow that repo and I get emails about it daily. So it's an active repo. Um, so once we've, we've chosen our standard, uh, Code Sniffer um, sees the standard in two parts. The most basic part of a standard is a sniff. And that is the most basic test uh, of your code. Right? So in our first example, we saw we wanted uh, padding within our parentheses. So we might have a, a sniff that looks for opening parentheses. And after every opening parentheses, it wants to see a space character. That is what a sniff is, and that's what it does. Now, a rule set.xml file specifies what sniffs 
are used by a standard. Um, so there is one rule set .xml per standard, many SNFs. And just to give you an example, this is the WordPress core standards rule set. I knew I would lose Wi Fi. <laughs> um, hold on, I might have it open. What luck. All right. Here is uh, the rule set.xml for WordPress core um, in the coding standards. Uh, each of these rule tags specifies a SNF or a group of SNFs. Um, and they cover a lot of different things. Uh, this allows space indentation, uh, you know, uh, array declaration, uh, valid function names, spa lots of spacing things. There's another one in here, disallow short open tag, uh, which basically makes sure the code follows the uh, make sure your PHP code starts with your um, open angle bracket question mark PHP instead of just open angle bracket question mark as that is often the, the default uh, web server behavior configuration um, in most setups. And that's something that a lot of people get tripped up on and this is a way to make it more consistent. So these are some of the the SNFs that WordPress core follows. Oh, yeah. There we go. Anyway. So uh, PHP code sniffer is a command line tool, so we will do a little bit at the command line. So the way you call PHP code sniffer is PHP CS, and if I do a dash I, that will show us all of the installed standards. And as you can see, there's a lot here a lot more than just the WordPress standards. Code Sniffer comes with a lot of default standards with it. Um, the MySource, Pair, PHP CS, PSR1 and PSR2, which are important. Squiz, uh, PHP Code Sniffer is written by a group called Squiz Labs. Um, and the Zen coding standard. And of course I've added our WordPress coding standards. Uh, according to the directions I mentioned earlier. So how do we use code sniffer? Well, the first thing we do is we specify a standard. I will specify WordPress as we have established that is the standard we are using. And I am in the directory I am in is a default uh, WordPress installation. So I'm going to run this on a, a WordPress core file. And I'll run it on wpcron.php. So the output's interesting. The leftmost column are line numbers, the middle column, priority, and the right column is a description. And right at the top, we see that familiar no space after opening parentheses. And the second one, no space before closing parentheses. All right. Now, you may be wondering why a core file has so many coding uh, 
coding violations? Well, um, the coding standards were established after CORE was around. Um, and while no, uh, all future, all, all current and future patches to CORE have to uh, follow those, the, the WordPress coding standards, um, what's there is there. Uh, there's no sense, there's no need to go back and change everything. Um, WordPress is a living uh, repository. We're updating code all the time. And as time goes on, more and more code gets changed uh, according to the coding standards. So, it, it, as you look through, if you ever find yourself looking through core code, chances are it may not follow the coding standards, and that's why. If you ever try to, to make a patch to core, and your code does not follow coding standards, you will be asked, hopefully nicely, uh, with a link to the appropriate standards to follow. Now, this output is helpful. But it's at the terminal. We can probably do something better. We can output it to a file. Oops. <clears throat> By adding report file. Oops. And I'll just specify a directory I know exists. That's not the file. Test dash report. Here we are. So now we can output to a file. That's better, but we can't really parse this. It's we can't parse it very well. So we let's change the format. And we can do that relatively easily by adding report equals JSON. We also have the option of XML. And that should oh, didn't overwrite it. Test report .json. here. And you can see, let me put some word wrap on that so you can actually see it. Here is all of that output in a JSON format. So now we can parse it if we so choose. But this is this is good, this is helpful, but it's adding steps to your workflow. And as a developer, I hate adding steps to my workflow. Um, and in WordPress, there's what we call a lot of technical, uh, technical debt, right? We need to know a lot. Uh, there's a lot in WordPress to learn. It's PHP, uh, you know, the base of HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You know, if you're using a CSS preprocessor, less or SAS, um, if you're using that, you're probably using Grunt as a task runner. Um, there's also MySQL, all sorts of stuff. And we don't want to burden a developer with extra steps in their workflow and more technical debt. So we can do better than just the command line tool, right? So that's where IDE integration comes in. Um, I use Sublime Text as my uh, code editor. Uh, PHP Storm is another popular option. 
And PHP Storm has some native integration with Code Sniffer. Uh, you still need to install Code Sniffer, I believe, but um, once it's installed, PHP Storm will work with it. Uh, Sublime Text, on the other hand, you need to uh, install an extension. And I've listed that here. I've linked to the GitHub repo. It's also available in package control, so you don't even have to leave um, uh, your, your editor. And I've also included a GitHub gist with some common Windows settings, uh, as I am a Windows user. and. Shocker, it's not that obvious how to uh, configure for Windows. So, let me show you how this integrates with Sublime Text. So if I go back to our unsniffed code from before, now I've set this to run on save because I don't want this I don't want to add steps to my workflow. And something I do every day as a developer is save. Save early, save often, right? So on save, uh, it is set to run PHP code sniffer on the file. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit save on this unsniffed uh, on this uh, unformatted code. And you can see we immediately get a pop-up window with some very helpful information. We have line numbers in parentheses. We have helpful descriptions immediately next to it. In the background, you can see those lines are highlighted, and a marker is added to the gutter. This is extremely helpful. So if I go in and oops, I see line 50, the first two errors are on line 50, and it's that padding within our parentheses again, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix that. I'm going to add a space here. I'm going to add a space here. And now I'm going to hit save again. And now you can see <clears throat> line 50 is no longer in our pop-up window. Uh, line 50 is also no longer highlighted and there's no marker in the gutter anymore because I fixed it. And I know you're thinking, this probably gets really annoying as you're coding with this pop-up and all these errors. But um, it is. <laughs> but as, you, as this happens, you're going to actually teach yourself what the coding standards are. And as time goes on, you'll start to code defensively. You'll, you'll realize, you'll, you'll do it unconsciously, you won't even realize it at the time. But when you hit save, you'll realize there are uh, you know, far fewer errors in that pop-up. And you'll, you'll be very happy about that. Um, I assure you. <clears throat> so that's how I integrated it into my workflow with Sublime. But how do you integrate it across a team, right? Everyone commits to a repo, hopefully. I hope everyone's using version control. Um, either SVN or Git, GitHub, what have you. Um, Code Sniffer comes with a sample pre-commit hook for SVN. If you're not sure what a pre-commit hook is, basically, when you commit code to your, your repo, uh, if you have some, have some code written in your commit hook, it will run that code uh, and it's pretty free form. You, you put whatever you want in, the, in the, the hook. So it'll run that code and based on a success or failure, it will allow the commit to continue, or it will stop it, and it will not allow your code to be committed. <clears throat> now, I've linked to an article on a git pre-commit hook. As I said, code sniffer comes with one for SVN. So I'm going to take a look at the pre-commit hook for git. Because there's something 
Interesting here that it, it does, that I want to point out. Um, at the top, we're specifying PHP. Uh, we won't get into too much of this, but there are two lines I want to point out. We're doing a git diff. So we're taking the most current version of the code in the repository, and we're co we are uh, comparing it to the version we're checking in. And it outputs just the differences. And then it takes those differences and runs our PHP code sniffer on just those differences. This is how we test uh, on uh, existing code, right? So we skip over all of the existing code and we're only checking the changes. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of existing code that doesn't follow the coding standards and we don't want to accidentally uh, flag that and then stop your commit for invalid reasons, right? So this, this pre-commit hook accounts for that. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's cool. Um, so how do we enforce this across teams? Um, well, the first thing we do is we, we chose a standard. Um, and once we have that standard, enforcing these, these, these standards across the team starts from the moment every person gets their laptop. You know, from, the person, from the time they're hired and they have a machine allocated to them, you know, the, generally there are two ways uh, someone gets their laptop. It's either pre-built or you have to build it yourself. If it's pre-built, make sure code sniffer is already in there. Make sure that the integration is already set up with your IDE. Right? Um, if you have to build your own laptop, then make sure it's part of the build instructions. Make sure if you have an internal wiki or something similar, make sure those, the, the build is documented. Make sure your code sniffer is a part of it. And make sure that uh, it uh, also shows you how to integrate it with your IDE. Um, we don't want to add to the workflow so it's better to do this extra work up front so we never have to worry about it again. We can just stick to fixing that pop-up, all the issues in that pop-up, right? Um, these, these checks should be at every step of development. And you know, just like we save, we wanna check our coding standards early and often. It'll only succeed if everyone buys in or is forced to, right? But you know, you may want to phase this in over time, right? So perhaps with the, the git pre-commit hook, or SVN, uh, you only flag it as a warning, right? You output the, the issues in the code, but you still allow the commit to continue. You have that up for maybe a month, maybe two months, the period you specify, and then uh, at the end of that period, you let the hammer fall, and you no longer accept commits that don't follow coding standards. <clears throat> so we talked about what coding standards are, why we need them, how to enforce them, uh, especially with code sniffer, and we've talked about how to use it at the command line, uh, how to integrate it with the IDE. Um, uh, Sublime Text and PHP Storm. And uh, we've also talked a little bit about enforcing the version control, right? But the most important thing is that coding standards starts with you. If you don't follow them, why should anyone else, right? Um, you should, if you believe in the coding standards, be an evangelist for them. Obligatory meme, right? Make sure you're sniffing your own code if you're asking other people to follow coding standards, right? Um, thank you. Uh,
That was the end. It's not a long talk, but I think it's a talk that uh, has importance and should be mentioned at the very least. Uh, again, my Twitter handle, uh, link to the slides, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, if, can you run post to front a directory from the command line to like, different projects, or is it kind of a file by file? Yeah. Um, I believe you can run it on a, a directory. All right. Thank you.